the 34 charges, exactly what we expected uh, to see. In fact, even less than what we expected to see. It's raw politics. It's exactly and precisely what I said in that opening argument to the Supreme Court of the United States. You're weaponizing 2,300 district attorneys accountable to their local constituencies to target political opposition. And when you see this indictment unfold, it's exactly what it was. And even the commentators on the left, 90% of them were saying very weak. We thought at least Alvin Bragg would try to say what the crime was that would elevate these misdemeanors, uh, the falsifying of business records in the first degree, to a felony where he says, you know, that because to do to do that, there must be, as the indictment says, an intent to defraud, an intent to commit another crime. There were 34 false uh, business um, uh, records. And they would not conceal another crime, but the indictment does not specifically say what those crimes were. We are assuming, perhaps, that they might be election-related. I'm wondering if you can uh, specify what laws were also broken. All right. So let me, let me say as an initial matter, the, the indictment doesn't specify that because the law does not so require. Someone's going to have to file what's called a motion for particulars because they don't even allege what the so-called other crime is that would raise this from a low-level misdemeanor, which is like a traffic ticket, to a low-level felony, which is what this is. These are the lowest level of felony. Now, the idea that a district attorney in Manhattan can then take a case and say that case is now a felony because we believe that the arrangement for this payment violates federal election law, when the federal government already said it does not, that includes the Federal Election Commission and the United States Department of Justice. You're going to prosecute the President of the United States and you're not going to have the crime listed? I mean, I, I get, again, he can follow the law and say, oh, well, these, you know, these, uh, again, these matters when we file these indictments, you know, look at the statement of facts. But even you go to the statement of facts and there's no specific, uh, uh, there's no specifics there, Dad. There's no, like, here's the statute that you violated. You can't have trial by ambush which is what he just said. We don't have to lay it out particularly. Actually, you do. It's called a motion for a bill of particulars. We don't allow trials by ambush. We shouldn't be allowing political trials in the first place. And this DA is way out of line. And every lawyer in America that understands this knows that. He could never point to what that crime was. He kind of stumbled around federal election law violations of how much you can donate to a candidate. Well, guess what? If you're the candidate, you have no limits. So that goes out the window pretty quickly. Uh, the second is uh, the New York state law. I think you talked about that. I wasn't a state candidate. And uh, the federal supremacy clause, the issues there, that federal law would override that. We know the DOJ looked at the federal uh, implications and said there was nothing here. The FEC looked at it and said there's no fine. If I had to characterize it, it's disappointment. I think everyone was hoping we would see more about the direction that they intend to take this prosecution. What is the legal theory that ties that very solid misdemeanor case, 34 counts of misdemeanors, to uh, the intent to co conceal another crime, which is what makes it uh, a felony. It simply isn't there. These are guys that would love to get President Trump dead. I mean, they have been they have been trying to get him indicted, trying to get him prosecuted, trying to get him put behind bars. They couldn't get him impeached. Uh, Mueller's team couldn't come up with anything. And even and now the first charges they bring against him are so weak. Even Andrew McCabe has to admit it. And I think it's because they're depressed and sad that this is the best the D.A. of New York could do. The president makes a statement that. The moment he went down the elevator at Trump Tower, they were going after him. And if there's two lawyers that know that very well, it's me and you, because we've been involved in every one of those cases, the special counsels, the impeachments, the Russia hoax. I mean, on and on and on it goes. I was involved initially in some of these New York matters during when the president was serving as president. And this has been the same plan. Now it's a state district attorney, a county district attorney. It's also the state attorney general. And they're making things up like a county DA can apply and indict on a federal election law claim that the federal government, number one, has said is not a violation of law. Number two, he has zero, none, no jurisdiction in that area at all, period. But here's the moment we're at, Andy, in time. Yep. We don't want this to become the norm in our system. I get why people say, let's start filing lawsuits against them. If this becomes the norm, we are no, we are no better than uh, Russia or China.